How much should you, a freelance graphic designer, be charging your clients for logo design? If you have a logo project right now that you're trying to price out for a client, you are in luck. I'm going to show you how to determine your rate in three simple steps. My name is Michael Masters. I'm a Michigan-based graphic designer. The method I use to price logo projects is called the fixed rate method. It's a very reliable method that I've used for a long time in my design career. This is specifically meant for freelance designers working with small to mid-level clients. It's also good for design students looking to start bidding real projects for real clients. Oh, by the way, I made a worksheet that helps you calculate everything I talk about in this video. You can get a copy of that in the description. All right, without further delay, let's look at the three steps to figuring out your fixed rate. Okay, step number one is knowing what you offer. I'm assuming that you've created logo designs for clients before. I want you to think about a logo project that went really well for you. Now create a blank Word document and make a list of each and every step you took on the project. Think of the services you provided like ideation, thumbnails, and comps. Also consider the different digital assets you provided for them. Maybe you delivered full color and monochrome versions of the logo and you gave it to them in both raster and vector formats. Now let's consider all the things you just listed as being your standard logo package. Later you can use this info to create an estimate for your client, but right now just consider how many of these logo packages you can complete in a week's time. This is gonna be different for everyone, but for our example, let's say we can do three logos every week and move on to the next step to calculate the pricing. Okay, so your logo pricing is going to be based solely on two factors, your salary plus your expenses. We'll start by looking at what a typical salary is for a designer. First, go to payscale.com. Just put in the job title and your location, and there you go. I'm gonna go with a salary of $50,000. Now let's have a look at your business expenses. Think about things like fuel to get to your appointments, software like your Adobe subscription, drawing materials, anything design related. These expenses will be different for everybody, but for our example, let's say we need another $800 each month, or roughly $10,000 a year. So if we add those expenses to the $50,000 salary, we need to come up with $60,000 a year. Now let's do some simple math to calculate our logo design pricing. We're gonna convert the yearly amount of 60,000 into a weekly amount and divide it by 52. This comes to roughly $1,153 a week. Remember how we said we could complete three logos in a week? Okay, let's divide that 1153 again by three and we come to 384. And there you go, that's the standard rate for our logo package. Okay, on to step number three. One thing I love about the fixed rate method is that your clients know what they're getting and how much it costs. That's great for new clients because, let's be honest, they've never worked with you before, but when you give them a specific price for a specific set of tasks, it'll be a lot easier for them to give the project a green light. And then there's the other side of the coin. You've never worked with them either. So you're gonna wanna protect yourself from something called scope creep. Scope creep is a terrible disease that can infect a design project if you're not too careful. The one major issue with a fixed rate is that the client has you on the hook to produce a logo that they're happy with. And that's great. You should certainly deliver more in value than what they paid for it. But the unfortunate truth is that not every client will fall in love with your first proof. And we should expect that there will be revisions on most of our logo designs. But every so often, you'll get the client that will put you through the ringer making minute adjustments to the design and submitting an endless amount of revisions. Just about every designer I know of has had a nightmare client who has done this. So in order to prevent scope creep from invading our project, there's two things we must do. First, we must take all that information from step one and put it into an estimate that our client must agree to. And secondly, we have to limit the number of revisions to the logo. The way I do this is, on the last line of the estimate, put the phrase, price includes X number rounds of revisions, additional revisions at X dollars an hour, whatever your hourly rate is. And that's it. You'll have a detailed breakdown of everything you're doing for your client, and they have no choice but to make their revisions count. Now, if you don't already have a way to create estimates and invoices for your clients, I am a big fan of FreshBooks. 
This program is really easy to navigate that even a small town creative can use it. It doesn't have all those extra features like those huge accounting software companies. It just does what you need it to. Send estimates, invoice your clients. It even allows you to accept credit card payments. There's a link in the description that will give you a free trial. Give it a shot and see what you think. I hope this video was helpful. If so, please click the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Toodles.